What's going on everyone? Dots from DotsGaming.com here on behalf of Nemesis Esports to bring you guys a Magic of Templar PvP build for the Elder Scrolls Online Markarth patch. So if you guys are familiar with my website, DotsGaming.com, this is the Retribution Magplar PvP build for my website. We will just be deploying the update for the current patch here on the Nemesis Esports channel. And the build, if you've seen it before from me, is relatively similar to how it's been. I've tried to make some adjustments to it and I've tried to make some changes, but honestly, I typically end up going back to the way the build originally was since i was extremely happy with how the build worked and how it's performed and it's served me really really well for a long time and it's become an incredible it's one of my favorite builds to play and we have made some tweaks and alterations though to update it for the mark karth patch but if we take a look at this stat sheet i mean it is looking really good we got 38k maximum magicka 26k health 16k stam 1370 magic recovery almost 22 68 spell damage 38.6 percent spell critical 20k spell resist and a 15.6k physical resist resist with 3k spell resist and then on the back bar we go up to 20.5k physical resist and 25k spell resist because we are on that sword and board bar but without further ado though let's actually hop into the build and our starting gear set for this is going to be two pieces of zons i do have the wrong trade unfortunately on this this does need to be uh probably sturdy honestly I prefer if this was sturdy um or you could even do impen if you'd like but right now i just have invigorating because it's what i have but Zons is my two-piece set for this build. I have run Grothdar in the past, and Grothdar would work really, really well too, but recently I have liked running the beam on Magic and Templar. It's really, really strong when you combine it with Power of the Light, and you are just sitting there jabbing somebody to death, and Zons is just ticking on them. It'll allow that Power of the Light to really, really build up and deal a huge smack of damage when it is done. So I really have been liking Zons for my Magplar. But like I said, if you are not a fan of this set, I know some people do not like it. I would recommend Grothdar in this two-piece slot to, again, give you some really strong proc damage to help you build up that power of the light. Or, excuse me, purifying light. Wrong spec. Uh, and then for our other five-piece, our main defensive five-piece, because this is a light armor build, we are still wearing Pariah. Uh, so Pariah gives me a line of maximum health, two lines of armor, and it increases your spell and physical resistance by 9850 based on your missing health. I know this set did get nerfed a couple of patches ago, but honestly, I've still found it to be really powerful for a light armor build, and I still do really enjoy it. Um, I've tried a couple of different sets and a couple of different combinations, but honestly, I still really, really like and enjoy the light armor Pariah setup. Like I said, even after its nerf, I still do think it is worth using if you've used this build for me in the past and you, you know, you liked it and you were worried about it not being as good because of the nerf. I, I personally still think it's really good and I've still had great success with it. So Pariah, one of my favorite defensive five pieces for light armor build, and I am still using it now. My other five piece is actually still going to be spinners too. Again, as you can tell, this build really hasn't changed very much. Uh, two lines of maximum magicka a line of spell damage, and then a nice boost to our spell penetration. Spell penetration, really, really strong stat, especially for Magicka Templar. This build's got really, really high base maximum Magicka with 38.2k maximum Magicka. We still have 2,300 almost unbuffed spell damage, so if we're able to also get extra spell penetration on top of that it's going to mean our monster set hits really really hard our skills hit really really hard and we are just able to chop through even the tankiest of opponents with all of this extra spell pen and i do like the fact that it does have the two lines of maximum magicka uh for the two and three piece bonus because it plays well into the fact that we run inner light on our front bar thus giving us a ton of return from these two lines and then our back bar two piece is simply going to be death's wind um i used to run um What's it called? I used to actually run uh, per, uh, potentates. Excuse me. I'm like, my brain stopped for a second. I used to run potentates on the back bar, but I think since it's nerf down to 5%, and because you get minor protection on a base, I got a base for Magic of Templar. I don't think it's as good as Death's Wind anymore, or it's like nearly negligible of a difference. So I'm just going to play it safe, though. Cause all these percent mitigations, obviously the multiplicative. So I'd rather just go with the armor, get the extra 1500 armor in that part of the defensive calculation. And so I am using Death's Wind as a back bar two piece because you only need spinners on your front bar. Now, as I did say, guys, this is a five light, two heavy setup. We are running heavy on the chest 
and on the boots, they are both two pieces of pariah on the body, and we have three pieces of spinners on the body with obviously the two Zons. Optimally, you would want to run uh, four impen and then three or four, uh, excuse me, three sturdy. Could run five impen if you want to, but at the moment I'm running, like I said, four impen, and then I would be doing three sturdy if this wasn't invigorating. I am running one triglyph, two triglyph, and then one, two, three, four, five maximum magicka glyphs. We have one magicka recovery on an arcane necklace, and then two spell damage on arcane rings. Really like arcane for this build. We are running a Nernhoned Lightning Staff on the front bar with a weapon and spell damage glyph. And then on the back bar, we're running a one-handed powered weapon with drain magic of poisons. And we have a, you could do Nernhoned or reinforced uh, with an enchanted magic shield on the back bar. Now I have been asked this question a ton on my stream, twitch.tv.gaming. And people have always been asking me, why do you run a Lightning Staff for... Magic Templar, and it is because that jabs, your spammable, technically counts as an area of effect skill, as does your ultimate. So by using a lightning staff, you are increasing the damage of your ultimate and your spammable simply for using a lightning staff. It's not technically a, it's like an, it's not technically like a direct damage. Like if we look at uh, the passive from the destruction skill line, right? If we look at Trifocus, um, Fully, uh, the wrong wrong passive, excuse me. Ancient Knowledge. Equipping a Flame Staff increases your damage zone with single target abilities by 8%. So, for example, a single target ability would be something like Toppling Charge, where you charge to opponent and hit that singular opponent with the damage skill. On the other hand, the Lightning Staff increasing damage zone with area of effect abilities, as we can see on Puncturing Sweeps, it has an area value. It's 8 by 6 meters is the area of the skill. Therefore, it is increased by a lightning staff and that actually segues me perfectly into my scales and the first one being puncturing sweep obviously we are running jabs dealing damage over time and then it was it uh slows down our opponents the, the closest enemy 40 percent for a second as we basically actively jab them and we heal for 50 percent of the damage done with this ability so we're basically able to stay in the fray stay in the fight simply with our spammable jabbing away the more people we hit the more healing we get we then also, like I just said, run toppling charge. This is not only our gap closer, but it also is our CC. Really, really strong skill. Also can act as an interrupt if they are on CC immunity. It's just really fantastic skill. Allows you to stun, interrupt, damage, gap close. It does so much for a singular button click, and it is a fantastic skill to have on your bars. I am running Elemental Drain. Elemental Drain plus the Channeled Rune allows you to run relatively low Magicka recovery on a Magicka Templar, all the while while using Vampirism. So getting that extra 340 near Magicka, effective Magicka recovery plus the 6K pen, it just adds too much to the build to not run. I, I absolutely love Elemental Drain. It is incredibly strong for Magicka Templar. We are also using Purifying Light. Purifying Light is going to be our big burst of damage. That is why I do not run Jesus Beam on Templar. I do not think you need it. Purifying Light is effectively your execute because as you jab and zons into the Purifying Light with all of the penetration you have and with all of your stuff running, when that pops, it's going to pop big and it should kill your opponent or nearly kill your opponent. You could just finish them off with the jabs. Our last skill for the front bar is going to be Inner Light. We use Inner Light for the just passive maximum magic increase, not only from the skill itself, but from the Mage's Guild passives. It also gives us a bit of magic recovery for having a Mage's Guild skill on our front bar. We can expose enemies that are in stealth. It just adds a ton of passive damage increase to the build, and my goal was to go for big purifying light damage, so Inner Light just plays perfectly into that strategy. We are running Crescent Sweep on a front bar as our enemy to just deal, or excuse me, as our ultimate to deal big burst of magical damage. Um, it just, it's so cheap. It's up all the time. It's a fantastic ultimate. It, it, it just deals a lot of damage, helps, like I said, build up that purifying light to really help you deal as much damage to your enemies as possible. Very, very good front bar ultimate. Definitely one of my favorites. It's, it's, it's dirt cheap. You'll have this up literally all the time. Back bar, we are running degeneration so that we have about a 12k dot over 12 seconds. And this is also our source of major sorcery and gives us some major skill passes on the back bar. We are, of course, running extended ritual. This gives us one of the primary hots for the build combined with a synergy for allies. And this also does cleanse five harmful effects off of us, which is really helpful for when we have bad procs or debuffs on us. Being able to just cleanse those off with this 
is incredibly helpful. We are also running Honor the Dead as our primary burst heal. And if we heal anyone below 75% health, we restore 18% of the abilities cost every two seconds over six seconds as Magicka. So you will get a portion of this skill back. I mean, I wouldn't really be using Honor of the Dead over 75% anyway. At that point, just jabs to heal yourself. But when you are using this heal in a pinch, it is going to be giving you some of that magic back, so it just makes the skill even cheaper. We, of course, also have Channeled Focus, giving us an effective 480 magic recovery just for using our armor buff. We also do get the actual 6k armor from the skill, and standing in the root gives you up to 50% additional physical and spell resistance granted from this skill. Makes us incredibly tanky. Between this and Elemental Drain, we are able to get a boatload of passive recovery that isn't actually in our recovery stat, which gives us a crap load of additional sustain. And speaking of which, I have moved back to using Vampire. I believe I did have Vampire also spec'd out for this build in Stonethorn. Um, I tried not using it in Greymore, but honestly, I hate playing Magicka Templar without Vampirism. To me, personally, I feel like when I play Magicka Templar, I need a Mist Form. I just for some reason, when I play the build without Mist Form, it just feels really bad. Uh, Magicka Templar is one of the better Magicka classes to actually handle Vampirism simply because you get so much passive recovery. So the minor skill cost increase really isn't that big of a deal. We also do just chill at stage one just simply to have access to Elusive Mist. I think your range defense as a Magicka Templar without this skill is really, really bad. So having this just allows you to defend against range. It allows you to kite unimpeded out of your Magicka pool. It's just an absolutely fantastic defensive skill, and that is why I recommend it. Your back bar ult is pretty much a flex spot. You have two choices. I recommend either Spell Wall from the one-handed shield skill line to automatically block for you and reflect reflect projectiles for nearly seven seconds or you could also potentially go with the swarming scion vampire alt my only issue with using swarming scion on this build i've i like it in theory i've used it a couple times and you just you deal a ludicrous amount of damage when you're in this form but because we do chill in stage one it is very very expensive it is 300 ultimate and if you use spell wall it's only 132 and your front bar is 73 so it's really up to you if you want to build up to that giant ultimate to just basically be a living god for 20 seconds you can absolutely do that or you could go with the defensive option the cheaper option and use spell wall totally your call there we already did go over stats in terms of our race i am a high elf you could do high elf or you could do dark elf for this build um I went with Haya for the stamina restoration when we deal class ability damage. We or when you activate a class ability, excuse me, boost to maximum magicka and increase the spell damage. So you could absolutely go with a dark elf for this build if you want to, but I like the high elf because you get the most out of that offensive potency. Uh, in terms of other things, we are running the Atronach Mundus Stone for extra magicka recovery. We are using the Bewitched Sugar Skulls buff food. Even though we are a vampire, you still do want to use Bewitched Sugar Skulls because you get the most value from the maximum health, magicka, and stamina. And like I said, we are a stage one vampire. In terms of our champion points... We are running 23 into Blessed, 56 into Elfborn, 64 into Elemental Expert, 46 into Spell Erosion, with 81 into Master at Arms, and nothing into Thaumaturge. 66 into Ironclad, 46 into Resistant, 37 into Thick Skin, 49 into Hardy, and Elemental Defender, with 23 into Quick Recovery, 56 into Warlord. Uh, I have 21 into Sprinter. Uh, you could move these into other places. I really don't sprint as much anymore because I do have Mist Form. Uh, but I do like to have the option to do it. But so you, you could you could relocate these points if you want to, you know, put them somewhere else. Or if you don't use Mist Form, you're definitely going to want to have those points. 75 into Arcanist, 37 into Stumbling, and 81 into Shadow Ward. But yeah, that is the CP loadout. In terms of our basic kind of rotation, you want to obviously maintain on yourself channeled focus for your magic recovery and your armor. You want to maintain degeneration on your opponents for your spell damage, and you also want to maintain elemental drain for your breach and for your minor magic of steel. With this build, if you do not manage your buffs correctly, you are going to notice a severe hit to your sustain, simply because two of the three skills you optimally want to maintain give you magic recovery. So if you don't 
do that, you're going to notice a huge drop in your sustain. Um, but the build is super straightforward in terms of your objectives. Like I said, maintain that. Let's say I put DJ on my target, LE drain on my target. You literally just simply purifying light, gap close, crescent sweep, and then start dealing damage with jabs. It's 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 very simple, very straightforward. And then that pops, and then you jab them a little bit more. Um, if you need to play defensive, you stand on your rune, hold block, purge yourself, and then go into honor of the dead. And if you need to kite, just hop into mist form and escape your opponents completely unimpeded. Really, really fantastic. I mean, look, you can stay in mist form for quite a long time. You know, it, it's really not that big of a deal having the cost increase. You're you're able to sustain it for a long time just due to the incredibly strong passive magic of sustain that Templar has. But guys, I do think on that, that is probably going to be it for me today. Again, on behalf of Nemesis Esports, I want to thank you guys for checking out this video. If you guys do want to get some more Elder Scrolls Online build content, you can feel free to check out my website, dotsgaming.com. Also, you can subscribe here to the Nemesis Esports channel if you want to see more of their gaming content. I will also be releasing more builds for Mark Karth here. But thank you guys for checking out this video today. I appreciate it. I'm Dots Gaming. Have a great day.